It's very interesting in the last speech by Martin that demonstrates the issues that's going on within the science community and the and um, agriculture departments and governments and it brings out and it's good to hear his story and what's going on there in relation to GM. For us we're coming at a different angle as farmers and what I'm showing you is the impact on GM it's having on anyone that wants to choose to produce a GM free product. So I'll go on and just show you a PowerPoint. You can have a look and I'll explain it to you as we go through and then you can ask us questions after. And I want to thank Scott very much for the introduction. I'd like to also thank um, the Safe Food Foundation, um, Slater and Gordon of course, organisations like NASA WA and there's been so many people that supported us um, through this event. I want to thank those very much. But to go on, um, in late November basically what happened, um, in 2010 my neighbour chose to use GM Technologies I don't deny him the right to farm his land as he chooses. Um, so he, he did proceed to plant it along my boundary and um, we'll proceed to... Basically, my neighbour's jam was planted along... This is the road. On the side, I've taken no photos of my neighbour's property because of legal implications. Um, that crop then, he swathed it in late November. I don't know if you know what swathing is. Basically, they cut the canola, lay it into windrows. We had a, a series of very hot days and then we had a southerly change and a cold front come through which proceeded to move that crop and these are the first examples of it onto the road. And they were the trait rural test and they tested positive to GM. My neighbour had previously informed me he was going to grow a GM crop there. This is of course my boundary, which on the side's my boundary so we've only had a road width apart. This was the first plant I'd found on the property, we, I was just preparing the fence, I proceeded to test that and that was the first positive plant we found. The distance is, you know, it's about three quarters of a car, that's the boundary where it sort of I showed you where those last photos were, so it's come inside the property. This gives a better idea, this is further in, um, this plant was just inside, these swaths originally had seeds all over them. This one's been eaten by stock, my, my sheep. The boundary is approximately 1.2 k's from the closest point to the GM crop to which that crop had now blown inside the property. Looking in a northwesterly direction across our farm, I'm looking in a southerly direction, it's approximately 2.5 k's beyond this point that the GM swaths had proceeded to blow across the farm. We ended up having about 70% of the property were 325 hectares um, contaminated. This photo just shows you various canola swaths, what they look like, just across the paddock, and these were spread across there. Of course, I asked the Department of Agriculture to come and investigate, and also we had to NASA, notify NASA, and I notified um, Kerry Redmond, our local ag department's minister's office, and also my neighbour. This is just further examples of contamination of just different swaths within the property. These, as they've blown into, the, into our crop, this one's a rye crop, this one's a spelt crop. Um, what happened is NASA then tested them after all the results were confirmed by the department and NASA as independent tests that it was all jammed. NASA proceeded to decertify that land completely. <coughs> Again, just examples how they're blown, caught up in fences and just in the paddock. The biggest problem for me is I have to remove all that off the property to get my certification back. The problem is with canola, you've got all these little poppy seeds and when these plants grow in, they bust and shed the seed all over the farm. That's just on, that one has taken in some crop, this one's just in the gully system. The problem for me is how do you move all that GM seed and how long is it going to stay in the soil, how long is it going to regrow. Another problem we had last year in January, that's what happened previously. We had a thunderstorm and that proceeded to wash the material further down this gully system. The first problem for me was do I create a liability to my neighbours now? Of course when you get a fairly substantial movement of water in a biological system 
and using these genetically engineered biological products, they're going to move through the system in various ways. Originally wind, and now we're exposed to water. The only bit of land I've got left organic is this bit up here. In the background is 128 hectares. It's proceeding to wash this water back into that land, so I've got to worry about keeping the certification there. Of course, after these rains, this is what happens. It grows on your farm and it creates more problems. Now we've tested these, that positive gene. I specifically put signs up, I notified my neighbours and so on before the event. I didn't want GM on my land, but now it's there and it's regrowing. Who is actually responsible for it? And hence, this is what we hope to establish in the court case. Um, whether we can choose to farm our land as we choose to, or whether we have to accept a level of contamination. The GM industry is trying to impose the 0.9% on us. We all know with seeds and natural products, it'll reproduce and grow. It's very hard to keep it at just 0.9%. So we presume in the future that level will have to be lifted or whatever. But we want to fight for that right to keep our products GM free, to which in turn allows you, the consumer, to buy a GM free product. Because if we can't keep it out, I don't know where you're going to get a GM free product from. This is just a sample of our organic crops last year. These are the main issues that I see as a farmer that we need to resolve or governments need to resolve or legislation. The GM industry, we've proven now beyond doubt, it was already known from America and other overseas, that it can't be contained or controlled. We lose the right to own our own seed because if we're going to get our seeds contaminated, um, under the organic standards, we, ha we can't use non-GM seeds rather. So how do we keep our seeds GM free if they're going to get contaminated? Before the advent of um, PBRs and GM, we, all our seeds used to be public variety seeds. So anyone can own it, sell it, whatever to each other. I can sell my seeds and my products straight to you. That's not the case with PBRs and um, certainly not with GM where they've got patents on it, I can't sell it to you or whatever, or, or I have to pay a royalty on that seed. Um, we want to keep the right to own our own seed, our old seeds, so we can keep using them, and I can sell those seeds to whoever I like and use on those seeds, whoever I like. And, I, and it goes on to legislation. I really believe we need a compensation fund. Rather than I have to go through the issue of um, suing my neighbours, and in a small country community, that's not the best outcome, believe me. We need a fund set up, or some, something set up against the GM industry where they pay compensation to not only farmers that are affected like myself, but to any contractor, uh, shires to clean up the roads, and the liability is going to be quite huge, but any liability issue, um, they should be responsible, seeing they've created the product. A few of the issues in regards to GM, I would like to keep, and I believe all farmers should have the right to choose how they farm their land. The other thing, I believe all the consumers, for various reasons, whether it's ethical, religious, health, or just your own preference, should have the same right. So that... And at the end of the day, we're at the edge, beginning of, um, I suppose, the impact of GM, especially in Western Australia, because they've been out 12 months, but it is your food, and it's your future, how you want to deal with this issue, and it's certainly your choice. So thank you, sir. I'll, I'll make a few more comments, and then we'll have some questions from people. Um, this uh, issue has been around a long time, and, and when genetically modified foods were introduced,